I'm Dan Benhart, Product Support Specialist with Midatoyo America Corporation. In this video, we'll discuss the use of a digital caliper. With a lint-free paper, wipe any dust off of the caliper. Place a piece of paper between the measuring faces and lightly close them. Without opening the jaws, pull the piece of paper out from between them. And this will ensure that both faces are free from dust and oil. Now perform a quick check on the parallelism of the outside jaws. Do this by holding the caliper up to a nearby light source with the measuring faces parallel and in line with your eyes and the light. You should not be able to see any light between the jaws. If you do, there may still be contamination on them. Reclean the jaws with a piece of paper and check again. If light still shines through, there may be damage to the caliper or a burr on the jaws, in which case it needs to be repaired. If the outside jaws are okay, check the inside measuring jaws if present. There should be a small amount of light shining through and the edges should be clean and free from burrs. Finally, check that the sliding jaw moves smoothly over the length of the beam. If it does, your caliper is ready to measure. For maximum accuracy, keep the workpiece as close as possible to the beam of the caliper. Failure to do this causes the measuring force to be applied at the end of the jaws where the most flex occurs. In some cases, the ends of the jaws are the only parts which can reach the feature that needs to be measured. If this happens, take great care to not apply excessive force as this will cause the flexing we just discussed. If you have a new caliper or have recently changed the battery and the caliper has an absolute encoder like this one does, the display will show a blank screen. This is because you need to set the origin by pressing and holding the origin button. While it is not required, this is usually done with the jaws closed. Simply press and hold the button until the display reads zero. The absolute encoder allows the caliper to maintain a reference value even when the caliper is turned off. This reference value is saved until the battery is removed. In addition to the absolute system, this caliper has an incremental measuring system. This is useful for setting the caliper to zero at a point other than having the jaws be closed. For example, measuring the difference between a particular dimension on a master and test workpiece rather than measuring the value of the dimension directly. To use the incremental system, set the caliper at the desired position and press the zero button. To measure with the caliper, simply bring the measuring faces into contact with the workpiece. Make sure that the faces are parallel to the feature by sweeping in all directions. To find the minimum value for external features, and the maximum value for internal features. Calipers can also be used for step measurements. This is done using the step measuring faces of the caliper, located at the end nearest the jaws. Simply set the face of the sliding jaw on the upper step, and slide the other face down to the lower step, again looking for the minimum measurement once both faces are in contact. Lastly, if your caliper is equipped with a depth bar, you can use it as a depth gauge. The depth bar can be seen on the back side of the caliper and is attached to the sliding jaw. To use the depth bar, place the end of the beam at the top of the feature which needs to be measured and slide the sliding jaw down until the face of the depth bar comes into contact with the bottom of the workpiece. 